students my name is Niyati Said and thanks for watching Edupedia word videos my topic for the presentation is human respiratory system okay so let's proceed towards our topic that is respiratory organs or and respiratory system okay mechanism of breathing vary among different group of animals depending mainly on their habitats and level of organization Lower invertebrates like sponges, cylindrates, flat form, etc. exchange oxygen with carbon dioxide by simple diffusion over their entire body surface. Okay? Earthworms use their moist cuticle and insects have a network of tubes to transport atmospheric air within the body. Special vascularized structures called gills are used by most of the aquatic arthropods and molluscans whereas vascularized bags called lungs are used by the terrestrial forms for the exchange of gases. Among invertebrates, fishes use gill whereas reptile, birds and mammals they respire through lungs. Amphibians like frog can respire through their moist skin also. Mammals have a well developed respiratory system. So humans have well developed respiratory system which is uh, composed of air tract or the air passage and the paired lungs. Okay. See, we have a pair of external nostrils. These are the nostrils uh, which opens out above the upper lips. It leads to the nasal chamber through the nasal passage. The nasal chamber opens into nasopharynx. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, nasopharynx, which is a portion of pharynx, the common passage for food and air. Nasopharynx, they open up through glottis of the larynx region into the trachea. Larynx is a cartilaginous box which helps in sound production and hence called as sound box. Okay. During soloing, glottis can be covered by a thin elastic cartilaginous flap which is called as epiglottis. Okay. Epiglottis, it prevents the entry of food into the larynx. Okay. Trachea is a straight tube. This is the trache trachea. This blue part is a trachea, which is a straight tube that extends up to the mid thoracic cavity. Okay. This is our mid thoracic uh, cavity, which divides at the level of fifth thoracic vertebra into the right and the left primary bronchi okay so these are left and the right bronchia each bronchi undergoes repeated divisions to form the secondary and the tertiary bronchi and the bronchioles ending up in a very thin terminal bronchioles okay so these are the, our lungs right lung and the left lungs and these uh, bronchi they undergo repeated divisions to form the secondary and the tertiary bronchi and uh, finally it forms a bronchioles in the lungs okay so the trachea primary secondary and the tertiary bronchi and the initial bronchioles they are supported by incomplete cartilaginous rings each terminal bronchiole gives rise to a number of a very thin, irregular walled, vascularized bag like structures called alveoli. Alveoli are present in the lungs, which is also known as uh, air sacs. Okay? And the branching network of bron bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli comprises the lungs. Okay? So we have two lungs which are covered by a double layered pleura with plural fluid between them means between the two layers of pleura there is a plural uh, fluid which is filled between them it reduces the friction on the lung surface okay and the outer pleural membrane is in, in close contact with the thoracic lining whereas the inner pleural membrane is in contact with the lung surface okay So what's the pathway of the human respiratory system? 
first the air enters the nostrils we have one pair of nostrils that passes through the nasopharynx and then it passes to the oral pharynx through the glottis it enters into the trachea and into the left and the right bronchi which branches and rebranches into bronchioles and each of which terminates in a cluster of alveoli that is air sacs okay now what are the functions of organ in respiratory system as we know respiration begins when oxygen enters into the body through the nose and the mouth okay the oxygen then travels through the trachea and the pharynx where the trachea divides into two bronchi here the bronchi are divided into bronchial tubes in the chest cavity so the air can be directly moved into the lungs now comes the nose nose is a primary upper respiratory organ in which air enters into and exists from the body okay and there is a cilia and the mucus lining is also present in the nasal cavity which traps bacteria or foreign particles or antigen that enter in through the nose in addition air that passes through the nasal cavity is humidified and moistened okay uh, there is a septum in our uh, nose which divides the nose into two narrow nasal cavities one area is responsible for smell and other is responsible for respiration within the walls of the nasal cavity there are frontal nasal ethmoid maxillary and sphenoid bones so there are four types of bone uh, sorry, uh, four types of bone nasal frontal ethmoid maxillary and sphenoid bones and there is also a cartilage which is present and that maintains the shape of the nose okay and then comes uh, after nose then comes pharynx and larynx pharynx besides the nose air can enter into lungs through the mouth and the pharynx is a tubular structure which is positioned behind the oral and the nasal cavities that allow air to pass from the mouth to the lungs okay the pharynx contains three parts nasopharynx which connects the upper part of the throat with the nasal cavity the oropharynx which is positioned between the top of the epiglottis and the soft palate and the laryngopharynx which is located just below the epiglottis okay and then comes the larynx from the pharynx air enters into the larynx which is commonly called as voice box the larynx is a part of the upper respiratory tract which has two main functions the passageway for air to enter into the lungs and the source of vocalization uh, that produces vocal or the sound you can say that's that's the reason it is also known as voice box the larynx is made up of hyoid bone and the cartilage which helps to regulate the flow of air epiglottis is a flap like cartilage structure which is contained in the larynx that protects the trachea against the food aspiration and then comes after larynx there is a bronchi and the lungs the bronchi allow the passage of air to the lungs the trachea is made of c-shaped ringed cartilage that divides into the right and the left bronchus okay usually it is seen that the right main bronchus is very shorter and wider and the left uh, then the left main bronchus so the right bronchus is subdivided into three lower bronchi while the left one is divided into two lower bronchi okay and then comes the lung we have one pair of lungs the lungs are the spongy air filled organs which is located on both sides of the chest cavity the left lung is divided into superior and the inferior lobe and the right lung is subdivided into superior middle and the inferior lobe Pleura is a thin layer of tissue that line the lung to allow the lungs to expand and contract with ease okay what's the primary role of lungs respiration which includes the transfer of oxygen found in the atmosphere into the blood stream and thus it releases the carbon dioxide into the air okay and then comes a air sacs or alveoli there are about 600 million alveoli which is found in adult 
on average okay which are tiny grape like sacs at the end of uh, respiratory tree the exchange of oxygen and the carbon dioxide gases occurs at the alveoli level although effort is required to inflate the alveoli okay and minimal effort is needed to deflate the alveoli after alveoli there comes a diaphragm diaphragm is a muscular structure which is located between the thoracic and the abdominal cavity contraction of the diaphragm causes the chest or thorax cavity to expand which occurs during inhalation but what happens uh, during exhalation the release of the diaphragm causes the chest or the thorax cavity to contract now uh, of course there are few muscles that are used for breathing they are located near the lungs which helps them to expand and contract the lungs to allow breathing process these muscles include diaphragm intercostal muscles abdominal muscle muscle in the neck and the collarbone area diaphragm is a dome shaped muscle which is located below your lungs it separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity and the diaphragm is the main muscle which is used for breathing okay the intercostal muscles they are located between your ribs and they also play a very major role in helping you to breathe then comes air passes passage okay which comprises human respiratory system air passage or the air tract is a conducting part of respiration it transports the atmospheric air into the alveoli alveoli is the terminal part of the lungs it clears air from the foreign particle as we uh, very well know that cilia are present in the nose which traps the bacteria or the foreign uh, bodies or antigens and it clears the air uh, to move it inside okay and it also humidifies and brings the air to body temperature okay now the path taken by inhaled layer air have you ever wondered what's the composition of air that we breathe in nitrogen is about 78 percent oxygen is about 21 percent carbon dioxide is about 0.03 to 0.04 percent hydrogen is present in traces uh, along with the noble gases thus the air naturally contains more oxygen than carbon dioxide okay this oxygen rich air is taken in by the nostrils in the nasal cavity it is filtered by the fine hair and the cavity also has a rich supply of blood vessel that keep the air warm this air then enters the pharynx and then the larynx and then finally into the trachea okay the trachea and the bronchi they are lined with ciliated epithelial cells and secretory cells the secretory cells they secrete mucus which moistens the air as it passes through the respiratory tract and also trap any fine particles of dust or bacteria which have escaped the hair of the nasal cavity okay and cilia on the inner lining of the windpipe is also there uh, which helps them to propel a particle outside and the air from the bronchus then enters the bronchioles and then the alveoli and the alveoli forms the respiratory surface in the humans okay as you can see this the, the epithelial cells and these are the cilia that helps to propel out the uh, foreign body outside okay and this is the lining of mucus which helps trap the bacteria or the foreign antigens okay and then comes the uh, air tract what's the passage external nostril nasal passage nasal chamber nasopharynx glottis larynx trachea primary bronchi secondary bronchi tertiary bronchi bronchioles terminal bronchioles respiratory bronchiole and the alveolar duct finally okay and each terminal bronchiole give rise to many thin and vascularized alveoli okay
Now comes the larynx. Larynx is also known as voice walls or the sound walls that produces the vocal or the sound. It's a cartilaginous wall box which helps in sound production. During soloing, glottis is closed by epiglottis to prevent the entry of food into the larynx. Okay? Trachea, primary, secondary and the tertiary bronchi and the initial bronchioles, they are all supported by incomplete cartilaginous half ring. Okay? As you can see that uh, there are uh, muscle, cartilage and ligaments are also there to support the vocal cord. Thyroid cartilage, scricoid cartilage and uh, cricothyroid muscle and cricothyroid ligaments. Okay. Vocal cord in action. As you can see when it produces sound it becomes like this and when it doesn't produce sound then it becomes like this. Okay, so the vocal folds they are commonly as vocal cords or vocal uh, reeds. They are composed of twin infoldings of mucous membrane stretched horizontally from back to front and across the larynx. They vibrate, modulating the flow of air. So they vibrate according to the flow of air being expelled from the lungs during phonation or vocal. Okay, vocal production. Now comes the lung. Lung is situated in the mid thoracic chamber and the, they rest on the diaphragm. Right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. Okay. As you can see that these are the lobes. Okay. These are the, it, so this is the right uh, lung and it has just two lobes and the left lung it has three lobes. Okay. So these are the lobes and it is covered by a double layer uh, structure which is known as pleura. Okay. Outer parietal pleura and the inner visceral pleura. pleura okay. In between these two layers pleural fluid is present that lubricates the lung surface and prevents friction between the lung membranes. Okay. This is the right lung and the left lung, which is uh, which is again situated in uh, thoracic chamber and which rests on the diaphragm. Okay, this is the right lung and this is the left lung, which has three lobes and it has uh, just two lobes. Okay, so upper lobe, middle lobe, and the inferior lobe. And in right uh, left lung, it just has the upper lobe, cardiac knock, and the inferior lobe. That's it. Okay. Lungs. Lungs is a branching network of bronchi plus bronchioles plus air sacs. Alveoli and their ducts form respiratory or exchange part of the respiratory system. Alveoli, they are structural and the functional units of lungs. Okay. As you can see, these are the branch-like structure which uh, ultimately forms alveoli which is a grape-like structure, grape-like sac structure. Okay. Now comes uh, lungs. Lungs are large cone shaped uh, organs located either side of the heart and the human has two lungs. Okay, uh, Right lung and the left lung which are not identical to each other as right lung is slightly larger than the left lung. Okay, And uh, as you can see that uh, all the uh, all two lungs they have uh, branching and finally leads to the alveoli which is a grape sac like a structure and which has a uh, you can say which has a capillary or the blood vessel supply okay so this was the internal structure of lungs okay now comes the steps of respiration of course uh, breathing which is known as pulmonary ventilation then diffusion of respiratory gases across the alveolar membrane and then gaseous exchange uh, or gaseous uh, transport takes place and then diffusion of respiratory gases between blood and the tissues and finally cellular respiration takes place okay now the mechanism of breathing. Breathing is of two types. Inspiration, that means we actively intake air into our lungs. Okay, as you can see that this is the inflation or this is the inspiration and this is the expiration means expelling of air from the lungs.
okay the mechanism of breathing first we'll uh, discuss uh, inspira inspiration means the how we inhale our inhale air okay as you can see when we inhale air rib cage expands as the rib muscles contract okay so in inhalation diaphragm contracts or move down this is the diaphragm which moves down while inhalation okay so diagram uh, diaphragm contracts and external intercostal muscles they all contract okay uh, diaphragm on contracting uh, Vertical volume increases, whereas uh, when the external intercostal muscle contract, rib and the sternum lift up. Volume in the dorsoventral axis is increased. And these two, they help in thoracic pressure, uh, reducing the thoracic pressure. And thus, lungs expand and the pulmonary or the lung volume increases. Okay. And uh, air moves from outside into the lungs. Okay. Now, the diaphragm role in breathing. What's the diaphragm role in breathing process? Inhalation and the exhalation are the processes by which body brings in oxygen and expels carbon dioxide. The breathing process is aided by the large dome-shaped muscle under the lungs called diaphragm. When you breathe in, the diaphragm contracts downward, creating a vacuum that causes a rush of fresh air into the lungs okay as you can see this is the um, inhalation process and the exhalation process and uh, how diaphragm helps okay so the opposite occurs with the exhalation where the diaphragm relaxes upwards and push on to the lungs and allowing them to deflate okay exhalation in which diaphragm relaxes or the moves up. In this, intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, they relax. These are the intercostal muscles and uh, thus the diaphragm also just relax. And thorax, it regains its original position. And the thoracic volume also decreases. Pulmonary volume also decreases, means the lung volume also decreases. And thus, finally, air is exhaled out. Okay? This is the process of breathing in and the breathing out. See, in breathing in, how it happens and in breathing out, how it happens. Okay? Mechanism of breathing, respiratory cycle and inspira inspiration plus an expiration. Normal expiratory or you can say breathing rate is 12 to 16 times per minute. Okay? And the spirometer is a respirometer that measures the respiratory rate. In this patient takes a deep breath and blows as hard as possible into the tube okay and technician they monitors and encourage patient during test and this machine it records the result of the spirometry test or you can say um, the breathing test or uh, whether it is lying between the 12 to 16 times per minute or not and on all this uh, process clip on nose of the patient is fitted okay so that he cannot uh, inhale or exhale from nose okay what are the respiratory volumes and the capacity what is tidal volume Tidal volume is the volume of the air which is inspired and expired during the normal respiration. It is approximately 500 ml. That is a healthy man can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 ml of air per minute. Okay. Now what is inspiratory reserve volume? That is IRV or the complemental air. Additional volume of air a person can inspire by a forcible inspiration. This average is about 2500 to 
three thousand volume or uh, in ml okay and then comes the aspiratory uh, reserve volume or the supplemental air this is the additional volume of uh, air that can uh, that a person can expire by a forcible expiration and this averages is about uh, a thousand ml to eleven hundred ml okay and then comes the uh, residual volume residual volume is a volume of air that remains in the lung even after a forcible expiration and this average is about 1100 ml to 1200 ml by adding up a few respiratory volumes described described above one can derive various pulmonary capacities which can then be used in clinical diagnosis okay And then comes the respiratory capacities. Uh, first is inspiratory capacity. In this, this is the addition of tidal volume as well as in uh, as well as the inspiratory reserve volume. That is IRV. Okay. So this is the volume of air that can inspire after a normal expiration, and this is about three thousand to three thousand five hundred mL. Okay. And then comes the expiratory capacity, uh, which is EC. This is the total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration. This includes tidal volume and the expiratory reserve volume, and this is the um, addition of tidal volume plus expiratory residual volume okay and then comes a vital capacity vital capacity is a vc which is a combination of erv tidal volume and inspiratory residual volume okay and this accounts about 3500 to 4500 ml okay and then comes a total lung capacity the total volume of air accumulated in the lungs at the end of the forced inspiration, this includes RV, ERV, tidal volume, inspiratory res residual volume, okay, uh, or vital capacity plus residual vol uh, volume, okay. So this uh, is average is about, um, that lies between 5000 ml to 6000 ml, okay. This is the uh, this is the bronchi and which uh, gets uh, bifurcated into bronchioles, primary bronchioles, secondary bronchioles. So these are the conducting parts, and the alveoli, which is a grape sac like structure, that is the main respiratory part. So the part of the respiratory tract from the nostril to the terminal bronchi, it is not involved in the gaseous exchange, and that is called as dead space. And the dead air volume is about one. 50 ml okay so this comes to an end thank you and keep watching edupedia word videos and in the my, in my next section of presentation we'll be studying about the exchange of gases so till then stay tuned